What's up guys, Dan Watson, LearningCameras.com. And the 5D Mark IV has just been announced, so I wanna kinda of give you some of my impressions on it. It's the 5D Mark III, I've been using this for just over three years now, so I've been looking forward to an upgrade to this camera. We've had some awesome cameras come out from Nikon, so the DA10, and then also the Sony A7R II. So I wanted to kind of give a comparison on what I think about the new specs that have been announced. I'll definitely get the camera in, and we'll do a full review and test. But until then, let's take a look at some of the things that were offered. Now, the body remains largely the same. There's only some small differences with the new one. So essentially, it's gonna be some very similar uh, feel and operation to it. There's an extra focus button. There's a USB 3.0 now, but little, little improvements on that. So let's talk about some of the specs that might improve your photo quality, and then also on the video side of things as well. Now, the photo side is where we have probably the most improvements we have a 30 megapixel sensor, which is not just about the resolution. Apparently they have some genuine upgrades to the sensor that should lead to better shadow performance and also better noise performance. I initially was a little bit skeptical, but after trying the Canon 80D that didn't really tout some big improvements and actually seeing those big improvements on the sensor side, I'm hoping Canon can actually deliver on this. They've really been beaten on the sensor side by Sony and Nikon right now, so they really need to step up their game and that's where I'm hoping some of the biggest improvements come from. Now the autofocus system is very similar. We have a new style autofocus system from the 1D X Mark II, but that's really it. Same amount of points, 61 points, 60, uh, 41 cross type. And uh, now you have F8 cross type points as well. And the only other thing really is that the frame of the focus points, you can now have them a little bit higher and lower in the frame. They take up a little bit larger area of the viewfinder. So that's nice. Uh, but really just little improvements on that side. Now we do have dual pixel autofocus, so you're gonna get autofocus and live view, which is great, and we do have a touch screen for controlling that. So this is probably gonna be beneficial to videographers a little bit more than photographers, but it's nice to see either way, even for the photography side. Now we are dealing with some small spec bump things, so we get seven frames per second shooting instead of six. We do have NFC, we do have Wi-Fi, we have GPS. Also the body is a little bit more rugged, uh, they say that the weather ceiling is now up to just about what the 7D Mark II is. So that kind of shows you how good the weather ceiling was on that camera, that the 5D Mark III didn't really come close to that, and only the 5D Mark IV is coming close to that level of weather ceiling. So if you need a camera to take out rugged, definitely get that 7D Mark II because they're really, <laughs> in a sense, making that sound so good by saying that this comes close to that after these improvements. So again, we're seeing some improvements on this, but just nothing revolutionary for me. Now, one thing new for this camera is the dual pixel RAW. And what this is, is basically recording a RAW file, but it's recording extra pixels at slightly different um, focusing. And it's using the dual pixel AF system to be able to do that. And what it's gonna allow you to do is basically to micro adjust your photos afterwards. And the file sizes are gonna be larger. But if you're doing macro shooting and you're looking for that exact point, it might be able to get it to the point where you can micro adjust that and fine tune that focus plane just a little bit. And that's gonna allow you to take a little bit sharper photos. If you miss the eye just barely, that's gonna get you that little bit. So you're not gonna be changing your focal plane in post like you can with Lightbridge type things, but it's gonna give you that, that little bit of extra control for, um, for fine tuning your focus distance. So this is something I'm curious to test out. You can also adjust your, um, your out of focus areas and in, in slightly tune that kind of stuff as well. It is an either or, so you can't do both, but you can kind of pick on what you're controlling with that. So I'm curious to see how this works out in real life and if there's any drawbacks that kind of lead me to not use it as often. So let's talk about the video side of things. This is where there's a lot of improvements, but there's a lot of caveats that come with this. So let's talk about the good things first. We do have 4K video. We do have a touch screen. We do have uh, 720p at up to 120 frames per second. We have 1080p at 60 frames per second. The 4K is up to 30 frames per second, which is great. We also have uh, external outs to an external recorder. We, with HDMI, we also have audio inputs. We have audio outputs for headphones. So a lot of features that we're seeing for this. Now let's talk about all the things that we don't have. So video recording in 4K is motion JPEG. Motion JPEG is probably not the best codec for videographers. It is a little bit more geared for photographers who might be extracting eight megapixel uh, 4K images from their video file. So it's not that it's bad, it's good. It's 500 megabits per second. So we're talking about very high 
quality video files. That is gonna be the problem is that they're very large, they're very difficult to work with from that standpoint. So that's kind of a negative for me on that one. Also, the 4K video recording is a 1.7X crop factor, which is a huge crop factor. So uh, again, we're almost turning this camera into an APS-C camera when recording 4K video. Now you do get the full frame when you're using 1080p and 720. However, those are not gonna be a full pixel readout. So that's a reason why it's doing the crop. Also missing are things like log recording, focus peaking, all of that stuff is gone. The dual pixel AF is, is genuinely gonna be a good thing and the touchscreen and controller is gonna make it a very appealing camera for anyone who wants to use autofocus. It is probably one of the best autofocus systems in any camera that's gonna be recording video right now. And so it's gonna make it a decent option for videographers looking for a camera below like the C100 and C300, this might be a decent option for them in that category. However, those other things are big negatives to me. Also, if you're external, if you're going external to a recorder, you cannot output 4K. You're only 1080p into an external recorder. So it's kind of the opposite of what we've seen with the A7S that offers 1080p recording internally, but will output 4K to an external recorder. This is really working the opposite. So we are dealing with 8-bit files as well. It is 4.2.2, I believe, so that is a good thing as well, but 8-bit uh, and nothing better when you're recording out externally to a recorder. So big limitations on the video side. It's really gonna keep it from being a good camera for me for that. So overall, these are kind of my thoughts. It, it is a logical step up for Canon. It came out with some new things. We're seeing some improvements, uh, hopefully on the sensor side and also on the quality side for video. However, it is clear that they are still not throwing everything into this. There's a lot of limitations, especially when it comes to the photos or, or the video side. Canon is just keeping things out of their cameras still. So this is gonna be a very good camera for photographers, but it's really not something I'm super excited about. I don't see this being kind of the next generation of cameras or the thing that's gonna be leading us forward into the next four years. Canon has typically long release cycles of talking three to four years between releasing a new product. And I really don't think that this is gonna set the standard of quality for the next four years to come. I think the next version of an Icon or Sony is probably gonna do that. So those are my thoughts on it. Again, it's not that this is a bad camera. It's gonna be one of the best we've ever had from Canon. It's that this is really not setting that standard. This is not getting me excited. This is not making it so that I am all canon for this and for this next ride. I might still get this camera just because it suits my lenses and it is a very good camera, but I was really hoping for something better. So stay tuned, we're gonna get the camera in full results uh, when we do that and keep up for some other videos on this camera. I'll be discussing it a lot more because again, I shoot canon, these are my primary bodies. I care a lot about the 5D series, so I definitely wanna give this one a full once over when I get this in. So thanks for watching.